Good afternoon, friends and partners. We're here for another week of our uh, Facebook Live, and I am so um, excited today. We have a special guest with us, and uh, you're going to sure enjoy this segment. Our special guest is Krista Hicks. She is a survivor, leader, warrior, advocate here in Central Florida, Southwest Florida, and she is uh, the executive director of One More Child Anti Trafficking. And so, uh, Krista, we just want, we're so glad that you're here today. And I know that um, we've just already been talking, that all the things. Yeah, that... we started talking and <laughs> probably could have filmed the whole conversation. Know, was good. Have. It was really good. But we're going to uh, repeat some of the things awesome. we're stating because I know that, you know, um, we just want you to share your testimony. And then where are you right now? Like, what is God doing? What are you oh. seeing in the anti-trafficking movement? Mm, awesome. And so we want love, we'd love to uh, hear your heart today. Mm, absolutely. Cool. Well, let's see, where do you start? Um, I am a second generation trafficking victim and um, just spent a lot of years thinking about um, the multitude of um, obstacles and issues that um, surround us when we're coming from this. and. My daughter, who's getting ready to turn 18, I think um, when I first got pregnant with her is when um, just really knew like somehow there's got to be a way out of all of the pain and the things that come with it. And, and at that point, I was no longer being trafficked, but I was um, living with all the repercussions, all the severity of addiction and, and knew I was... Um, walking her right into being a third generation trafficking victim and the first two years of her life were beginning exactly like the first couple of years of my life and um, just having to look back and then adding to that um, becoming a therapist and just you know love the um, love the Florida Board of Licensure I love the degree that I got from Liberty but knew that um, it was somewhat missing a piece that um, they just don't it's it was a great basis of knowledge, but it didn't fully give the whole piece of what was happening to us and what was happening to the trafficking victims that I had come to know and love and, and the ones who had survived um, and were rebuilding life. There was just so much to it. So Krista, how did you get out? I mm -hmm. mean, how did, or how did, you know, you, you get out and then the revelation of, because yeah. um, I know many times the victims don't know they're victims. Oh, absolutely. So how did, so how, much, how did yeah, yeah. Um, well, and, and I say I was 29, so to me that's much later than we want to reach trafficking victims. I was trafficked at 15, um, and, and really because my mom was a trafficking victim, I look at my family history and think we, we want to live in a world where we can reach survivors before my mom even had me. We don't even want to let it get to this, but I was 29, um, and the first time I started to get help was like many of us for severe drug addiction. So I was um, strung out on heroin, strung out on crystal meth, and then went on to um, being strung out on shooting cocaine. And through those things, um, got into a lot of trouble and in and, and jail is where um, life kind of paused for a minute. And some things that I had heard about God came back to me and I had um, been um, never known God and not had a desire until about having Marissa I all of a sudden for those two years was like is there a God and really just starting to question it but I was so strung out on drugs by then there was really no reaching me and then sitting in that jail cell that night I um, started to think back actually on um, a statement that someone had said to me when I had gone for treatment at one point a couple of years before that they had said that you um, sit and you repeat a mantra over and over again and you'll see your life change and it's thy will not mine be done. But at that time I was like 24, I had no idea what the word thy meant. So if you say thy will not mine be done, but you put a word that you don't understand in the word thy, it's meaningless, the whole thing. So I would sit there and say thy will not mine be done, thy will not mine be done, thy will not mine be done. And then obviously nothing happened and I kept shooting up drugs. And so that night in the jail cell, somewhere in those two years, it had started to hear something and that night it hit me that thy is God and that like will means he might have a will for my life. And so my first, first prayer was very, um, it wasn't um, sophisticated in any way. It was God, if you want this mess of a life, you can have it. And from there, um, 
I spent that night just having talks with God that didn't make sense. They were beyond my maturity. And um, by the morning, I knew that um, not only was there a God that he really did want my life, and that somehow I was going to figure out how to get to know him. Um, from there, I went away to a year-long program that um, I am very grateful for and appreciate. But it also was a season in, um, in the history of the United States and even the world where we didn't understand trauma, we didn't understand trafficking, we didn't really have the verbiage that was known for it. And so um, the model was a very um, all or nothing model that didn't completely get to the root of my, um, my struggles, yet I embraced um, the time with God and, and really embraced everything I was learning. Um, came home after a year and knew um, that I was called to ministry, didn't know what that meant and definitely hadn't heard trafficking yet and then um, knew I needed a job because we need to earn a livable wage and um, was trying to figure out how to do that. So I started cleaning dog kennels and then also reading um, textbooks onto audio for a local university. I had always been um, a reader and so that was a skill. And one of the first books I read happened to be about sex trafficking in another country. And where I did not identify my own story or see what happened to me, I knew with everything in me that that is what I will do with my life. Now, I just didn't see the similarities because like most people, it was about um, you know women being chained to beds and being locked up. And, um, and fast forward quite a bit later, and um, I first heard about um, trafficking domestically after graduating school and um, you know I wasn't ready to see the similarities in my own story and so I encourage people when you spot that someone is a trafficking victim give us space and give us time and um, don't worry about if we're ready to accept the verbiage so for me that was pushed on me a little fast and, um, and became very re-traumatizing that I didn't understand what that meant and I really wasn't ready to process that even though I knew I wanted to work with it. And over those next years, I will say, only as of like seven years ago, no, maybe six years ago, did I really start to, um, well, I sat down with the federal definition and read that thing over and over and over and over and over again and just kept thinking back to when I was 15 and what happened to me. And Krista, can you kind of explain to our audience? Because we, we did a segment yeah. a few weeks ago on victimology. Yeah, absolutely. That those layers of trauma, right? Yeah. Um, many times that people will say, why don't, why did she run? Why did she yeah, tell the absolutely. authorities? Absolutely. Why did she, you know, tell somebody? Yeah. And why did, why don't they say, hey, you know, they don't wear a sign that says I'm a victim, right? Yeah, well. So why, can you understand? Uh, I can, I can absolutely try. Um, you know, for me, which my story represents so many, and I've just now gotten to know and love and befriend so many survivors that have so much in common with this, that um, for one, you know, we don't come to um, getting help because of something done to us, because we're not even, like we're so, by the time a trafficker is um, exploiting us, we're shamed and we're typically seeing all the things, the reasons why it's our fault. And um, even when we are um, held against our will, which many of us are, that's not how we got to it. And so um, like so many myself, it was a boyfriend. And all I could see as the years went on is that I, I was homeless, I couldn't see that part. All I saw is that I went to his house. And because I went to his house, it felt like everything that happened after that to you know a 15 year old was my fault and then, and then, you know, I did escape and it took a couple months and, and that is even rare. I mean, oftentimes I, and, and I encourage people when they hear my story that um, after he started holding me captive and um, exploiting me, I did not have love feelings for him. And people always want to um, value that as like the good story and that if I can stay unattached, then, then why can't others? And I share, um, it's very important that we remember that um, those of us who don't get attached to our traffickers, instead of seeing that as a win, you might want to ask why. And sure. I said I was a second generation trafficking victim, so I had grown up seeing a mom trauma bond to um, very early in my years, that was my beginning of life. And then she went on to have other relationships that weren't trafficking, but they were all unhealthy. And by the time I would be trafficked, 
I had already hardened my heart in such a way and decided that nobody was ever going to get close to me. And there was not going to be attachment to human beings of any type for any reason ever. And so I say, if we are going to call that the good story, then we have this all wrong. Sure. Because to me, it's more sad that I didn't trauma bond to the trafficker. Yes, it helped me escape and, and the whole time, and I wasn't trafficked again until age 24. So in, uh, in some ways, that's nice, but it's only because of coming from a life of trauma that I wasn't, um, didn't have the same attachments yeah. that other people you have. Were, you were numb, detached. 100%. Yeah. And when I look at my mom's story and other trafficking victims who do attach, I honestly am praising God they're still capable of love. Like I had to work hard to learn to be capable of love and God used my daughter um, mm -hmm. to help me have feelings that for the first time really. So I just encourage us whether you see someone who's trauma bonded to the trafficker and doesn't escape or someone who um, escapes but you can see that it's attachment issues that we remember both are equally um, traumatized by the life and by the million things that go around it. And while I did not, um, I did not attach in a trauma bonded relationship to my trafficker, I attached in a, in a very trauma bonded way to drugs and spent the next many years um, having drugs be my everything, like wow. literally my everything. So you have, uh, you know, it's a miracle. It is a miracle. You know, it's just what you're doing today, Krista. Thank you. And, and I know you're the executive director of a uh, safe house and a program yeah. here yes. in Central Florida and Southwest yeah. Florida that is thriving. And so, can you tell us a little bit about absolutely what's, you know the work here? Absolutely. So, um, I, as a licensed therapist, get to use an approach that um, is very just trauma competent, but also based on seeing each girl, boy, um, young woman, young man we serve as an individual and getting to respect them, not because they're doing what we want or what I think will lead to a better or new life, but respect them because they're human beings and, and God loves them the same way he loved me through um, all of that mess. And so we have three parts to our anti-trafficking program and we're one more child anti-trafficking because everything we do is truly about that individual, the one more child. Yeah, me too. And um, so our safe home for minor girls, ages 12 to 17, um, we serve girls throughout Florida. Uh, just amazing. My One of my favorite things in life that I get to do not often enough is um, about once a month I get to spend a Friday night and just hang out with them. And you know, you see so much healing done through fun. So that would be another side lesson is um, if you're thinking you want to get involved in this movement, um, find God's peace and be ready to have fun and share it. Um, we need laughter, we need peace, we need joy, and, um, yes. and we need um, the people helping us to not try to fix us and not um, behavior change model yeah. us. Yeah. And so our safe home just exudes that model. And then we are the Open Doors Outreach Network providers for Central and Southwest Florida. So what that means is that it's a VOCA grant that um, allows us to serve ages 10 up to 24. And um, men and women, boys and girls, we provide mobile 24 seven services, including a clinician, uh, an advocate, and a survivor mentor. And then our goal is not to duplicate services. Our goal is to um, partner within a community that um, every one of us, whether a trafficking survivor or not, need a healthy community to thrive in. And um, we need more than one person so that we can see community interacting and supporting us. And that's why I love being here today because um, so much, even if one organization can provide all the wraparound services, which you guys do, which we do, we still work better together. Like Absolutely. when we can help a survivor see that um, multitude of relationships, then she's gonna go off or he and build healthy community for themselves. And that's so much at the heart of yeah, what we do. We're role modeling and for we those really across the nation, and I know we have uh, you know partners now across the United Kingdom, yeah. but this model of one more child in uh, anti-trafficking is really uh, those that are in other states. I say, uh, Krista, the fought they're in foster care. They know yeah. at 18, many times, um, you know, they uh, stop services oh, in the model absolutely. that they, you know, we know they're going to age out of the yep. of, of child welfare system. Yep. That you guys go all the way to 24. Exactly, it's just incredible. Yeah. So 
Well, you know. and it allows us to um, continue with services as they become young adults, but our goal, especially when they're hitting 18, is to partner within the community and see them, you know, we don't want to wait until they're 23 and a half to see yeah. them thriving in community. We want yes. to see them, you know, volunteering and coming for services from Florida abolitionists for things and coming to one more child and building just this network of support because then we know that as time goes on and they do turn 24, they're going to be off and running, building their own life. So one of the things I love about Krista too, and, and so many of the others, um, you know, we're both attending the one yeah. purse uh, breakfast yes. Thursday morning for Heather Absolutely. Case. Absolutely. Look um, online, one purse. Yes. Uh, that's just the collaboration amongst the stakeholders because yeah. we can't, you know, it takes a village, we've all heard, and it Absolutely. really takes um, a village, uh, really I call it sometimes an army in the anti-trafficking movement because we ha we need one another. Oh my goodness, I, yes. Know, we don't have all the answers, um, you know, we're limited. Yeah. We I learn something new every day. Yes, right? me too. And so, and we need to listen really yeah. to, um, you know, our survivor warriors like yourself, Krista. Thank you more and more because you know those that come from maybe privilege or we come from you know others that maybe the suburbs or maybe you didn't go through any kind of abuse um, a lot of times we don't understand that you don't need our pity and we're not yeah. gonna save you yeah. and we're not going to rescue you yeah. you know through God's sovereignty and God's grace and mercy yeah. and love that yeah. we are here today because we care and that's really the yeah. all we can really show, right? Yeah, is, absolutely. Is, is that. Absolutely. And we do. Like, I know, you know, historically there was so much talk about survivor leaders versus um, non-survivor leaders. And, and just this is such a model. And, and um, One Purse and our relationship is such a model. And Rebecca Bender Initiative has such a model of it's both. All of us coming together. And we are um, survivors and allies. And... And just like you do, it is it is wonderful when you recognize that we have lived experience that you can learn from. We also, I share like so much of, of the reason I'm standing here today is the allies who didn't have their own trauma and were able to stand beside me and, and help me to um, navigate all those obstacles, to become a parent, to um, handle the many relationships that I was going to have to walk away from to have a new life. And, and I think um, I, I couldn't have done it without allies who didn't have their own trauma to overcome. And I think how beautiful when I got to learn from both and blend a life and my mentors include allies and survivor leaders. Yeah, so, and, and two of those are Heather Case and Rebecca Bender. So yes, get absolutely. So some time with them Yes, this week. very so excited. We're, I'll be there Thursday morning. Yes. Rooting y'all on. Thank um, you. So we have a special gift for you today. Wonderful, and, and, that's awesome. You know, I say for you and for, for your, yeah. your, um, your ladies. Yeah. Um, and it is a gift from uh, Cinderella Release. It's a from Ashes to Beauty, and they make quilts uh, for uh, the residents and their safe uh, house here yes. in Central Florida. And we just want to give this to you uh, because um, each one is special. It was crafted by a group of uh, the Cinder Release in Pensacola, Florida. And so this is a, their gift to you all. Amazing. And our One More Child Anti-Trafficking Safe Home, the girls, they are absolutely going to love this. So we thank you. They, um, you know, there's four girls there and I have four blankets in my hand and they are going to just cherish this. It's comforting when they know that um, the community cares about them and the yes. state cares about them. And so it means a lot to build hope. Definitely. Give, give them our uh, love and regards. Uh, so friends, if you know, we know many of you are uh, coming on our Facebook Live every week and we appreciate it. And you want to learn more how to get involved. Well, we have a couple trainings coming up. One is our uh, called Firewall and it's online safety training for parents, students, teachers, uh, those in the community. Uh, it could be youth pastors, youth leaders as well. And come and learn how to keep your kids safe because we know that prevention is key as, as well as restoration. Absolutely. But if we can really give them, empower them, right? Educate them to not believe that person on, on that social media or to fall mm -hmm. into that, that trap at school maybe for acceptance and, and, and attention, then it's all, it's all worth it. So you're gonna see a lot uh, more on prevention. It's this Saturday, uh, September 22nd, 
And you can go on our, uh, our website to sign up or Facebook, stophumantrafficking.com, or Facebook at Florida Abolitionists. Please sign up for that. And then our regional training is October 27 and uh, Saturday, and that is also on the website. And so come learn because I, w w one of the things we do at the trainings, Chris, is we know we don't have everything. I tell our students um, there may be you know, one more child or Samaritan Village or some yes. of the others may be the right fit for them. We want to, uh, them to come and learn what is human trafficking, what does modern day slavery look like in our generation. But then you, uh, if you're someone who is spiritual, you pray, see where God assigns you to. We say give you your time, talent, or treasure, yep. and just get involved. Exactly. Get involved in this global community, exactly. and we would love to have you. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you. Till next week, uh, friends. Uh, we'll see you then.